everyone, it's Robin R.S. Island Crafts and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you the crafty goodness that I worked on this week. So last week we were working on the square to square. We worked on it during a live stream and then also on the Friday tutorial where I showed you one method where you draw the X and cut through it and then just press it open. And that's how we worked on the batiks. And then these are my oops from when I was working on the Friday tutorial. As you can see, I lost the corner, the points in that one, so it looks like this, which is fine. I don't mind at all. And then this one was just too small. As you can see, it's not the right size. And that's because instead of on the second squares, just cutting them in half once diagonally, I still had I still had this in my brain, so I cut my second round, my white squares, and the last round into two. I cross cut it into an X, and that made me a much smaller square, which is fine, but it doesn't work for what I wanted. So this was the original one where I cut it into two, so that I thought to try to save and salvage the fabric that I'd already cut, so maybe I'd make the center square smaller, but I wanted a six and a half inch square, so this is fine. And this is fine and this is fine but it wasn't what i wanted so let me show you what i turned my projects into i created pillow covers i actually forgot that i was making pillow covers and i turned this one into a wall hanging halfway through but then i remembered before putting the binding on and i turned it into a pillow cover and i'll show you how i did that it's not that big of a deal there is the back. I used the same fabric from the second round, my light colored one right there. And I put that onto the back. There's my little hidden zipper. I put a little ribbon pull onto it just to make it easy to grab the zipper because it can be a little hard. My pillow form is not the best. It's a lot of the white outer fabric and not a lot of stuffing so I have just to make sure it doesn't get stuck in the zipper there you go of course you can see where the zipper is but the zipper is hidden I even use the purple one to match everything so the zipper is hidden so if you want to turn this around the other way and you're laying down on it or something like that you can it's not gonna hurt anything but also if you don't want to use this as a pillow you just remove the pillow insert, zip up the zipper, and now it's flat and it can go on a tabletop. It, you can't see it, but there you go, right there. It lays nice and flat. I can, I can feel the zipper, but it feels like maybe some extra seams or something. So you can easily lay this down on the center of a table and use it. Put some of those Velcro command strip type things on the back and hang it on the wall. And the difference between this one and the next one I'm going to show you is this one actually has a nice petite quality fabric on the back because I'd use that as the back of my fabric and I quilted everything. And on the back of this, I have fusible fleece on the inside. It is quilted the back cover, but I have a white muslin type fabric on the back, just a basic, simple white fabric. It makes the back nice and sturdy. It's quilted with the wiggle squiggles down here. And that makes it sturdy so that when you're pushing your form in and out, you don't have to worry about anything. It's nice and sturdy and secure. And it's not gonna stretch or get holes in it or anything just from you putting it in like that. And then the quilting on the front, I went ahead and I quilted just barely outside in the ditch like right here so just outside of the white fabric and I did that up and down everywhere and then I went ahead on both sides of the seam I quilted it that way and this way see how close I got with the quilting right there and then about the same right there just a little extra and you can see the batik binding I chose. So this has batik fabric everywhere except for that white fabric on the inside. So you can see everything was nicely quilted. I was thinking wall hanging, wall hanging, not remembering it's going to be a pillow. It happens, right? So there is the first square to square. And I like that this was all 
what I would think of as like the ocean colors and stuff like that with some orange popping. I was going to put an orange binding on it. I actually tested a couple different oranges because there are several orange fabrics in there, but it, it popped a lot and it probably would have used it if it was the wall hanging but as a pillow i just stuck with the same type of bluish greenish type batik color so that it blended in and it didn't take away from the entire pillow cover now both of these pillows are an 18 inch pillow form and the difference with this one is this pillow form it doesn't seem to be very stuffed like very full there's not a lot of stuffing inside of it it's a very flat and loose one. It's been through the dryer. It's one of the ones you buy on Amazon and they came in like a pack of two or three and they were like this thick in the package. And then you open it up like those mattresses and you let it rest for a couple days and then you run it through a dryer. And this one just never really fluffed up very much. Now this one, as you can see, it, it's, it's much fluffier. It fills the pillow form more. I just found it really interesting that two pillows from the same company from the same order ended up being different. But this is the purple butterfly one that we worked on where we didn't lose any of the points. And I actually had some yardage of the charm pack. So this is the same blue fabric here that is right there. So I had enough to do the same thing. I have the pillow back. This one is quilted also in the wiggle squiggle. That one is more of a wave. And this one, I actually used the stitch on my machine to go ahead and stitch across the little hidden zipper. The zipper matches so well with that fabric. I was, I was really surprised at how well it matched. Again, I put a little ribbon on the zipper to help make it easier to zipper. And then the pillow just comes right out, no problem. Close it up and now it's wall hanging or it can go on your tabletop. This one also has the fusible fleece on the back. The only difference with this one is I didn't put any type of muslin fabric or anything. I just wanted to see what it was like with just the fusible fleece. And it's okay, it's perfectly fine like that. A lot of people just put a piece of fabric back here and they don't, they like fold over and do hems and stuff like that. They don't put anything else back there. But I said that I really like to have something that's a little bit sturdier, that's gonna last a little longer. And the fusible fleece without the muslin back there is fine. I just like the finished look on the inside. And this one has that more creamy unbleached muslin or something like that. And the quilting on this one, I just followed the diagonals of the blocks and then I did about a quarter of an inch double stitching across the seams that way and I really like the way that one turned out and I actually used a pink thread for that one and then the dark purple for the binding so I thought that came out really well so whether you like to have it as a pillow or a pillow cover or you want to have it just as a wall hanging they're both very versatile that way and I really love the way they turned out both of these will be in my Etsy shop, hopefully by the time you see this video, otherwise soon after. I'm just really, I, I just love the fact that this matched so well because of course it's from the same fabric line. So to be able to have a yardage to match a charm pack. So thank you guys so much. For those of you that know my love of butterflies and you shared some of your fabric with me. Now you get to see what it turned into. I was a little concerned about the stripe fabric. I needed to add in two of the stripe squares since I messed up the ones that I had already cut. And I was worried that they were gonna stand out too much. And I don't think they stand out all that bad. This one, I don't even think it's noticeable. And the green really just kind of blends in. I really like using the white or a semi-solid or something as the second color here whether it's going to be gray or pink or purple or white or whatever i think it works really well to set everything off because then you get what looks like a solid block here and that so people might look at it and they're like well, what did you do this and then that and how did you make that that looks so complicated look at that did you do this is that like a what are the hourglass block so did you put this on the diagonal no 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 we had a little trick to that so that's just your basic square and a square 
So you could see the same thing here, and I think it all depends on the fabric you use on whether or not that stands out. For this one, these big squares stood out more than the little butterflies. And since we're doing the square and the square, let me show you a card that I received. Isn't that fun? Look at that square and square. And this is put into a card, and then you see how it's got that circle cut out there? I asked the person to send this to me. Thank you so much again. I'm gonna put this in my card collection. But this is a pre-made card stock, not the actual card. She made the block and everything. But what this is, is I don't want to show you inside because there's a lovely note inside. So you have the piece of fab up. Uh, so you have the piece of card stock that goes here, the piece of card stock that goes here, and then there you go. There's card stock inside here too to where you just slide your whatever you're gonna put in there. And this one is just a fun square in the square. So that was perfect timing. And then usually when you buy a pre-made card, it comes with an envelope. So you're all set to mail it off. So for my patrons video, patrons, you guys didn't call me out on it. I got a little confused and I thought that this last Sunday was the first Sunday of the month. So we worked on our mug block and we did the June one, which was this really cute bee. I still need to do the little embroidery for the antenna and stuff, but I don't want to do that until the actual quilt top is finished and quilted. But you guys are so sweet. You didn't even call me out because we do this on the first Sunday of the month and Sunday was the 29th. I'm recording this on Monday the 30th. No, Monday the 1st. Wait, I am so lost. I'm recording this on Monday, which is May 1st. So therefore, yesterday, Sunday, couldn't have been the first of the month, but that's okay, because it all works out in the end. I'll just have a different video for the first Sunday of the month. So here's my little bee. I think it turned out really cute. The wings are a very light gray, so it just barely notices them. But I love that black and yellow against the white. I have my brain going in 17 different directions and I'm starting to really kind of lose track of things. So I need to pay more attention. I had several things going on in my brain when I was making the wall hanging this weekend. I knew I just wanted to. Apparently every telemarketer wants a call on the first of the month. I don't know what's going on today, but that's my third phone call while I've been trying to record this. But I was so busy thinking about the excitement of these projects and not thinking it's going to be a pillow, I'm making a pillow, I'm making a pillow. I was just thinking, all right, so I'm gonna work on this and while I'm doing this, I'm gonna use this sewing machine and I need to go ahead and clean over there and I need to get the things listed in the shop. All of the zipper pouches have been listed, so if anyone who is waiting for them, you can check my Etsy shop. If you favorite my shop, Etsy does a little notification and lets you know then I put up something new in my shop. I love that feature. I check mine all the time for the shops that I favorited. So I, instead of spending the time, like I normally will spend the time with this project and whatever I'm watching on my tablet. And I usually just something for background noise so I can be part of the project. I want to, I want to enjoy the process. I want to feel relaxed when I'm done. I want to feel that creativity. But instead, because everything is just crazy right now, I had so many other things on my mind. One of the things that's always in the forefront of my mind is the move before the move. As many of you guys know, the kids and I are gonna to move to Arizona towards the end of this year, maybe even into the beginning of next year. But part of that process is, is I need to sell this house first. Hurricane season starts on June 1st. We've already had a couple of severe storms come through. Knowing that I'm going to sell the house, I just would like to sell the house and have that worry behind me. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to pack. What am I gonna pack next? I've done all the purging pretty much. I'm still a little purge here and there, but I've taken probably several large black trash, trash bags up to the thrift stores and I have put things out to the road for free to people just pick up. And I really love it because I, I watch out the window and I, and I peek out of the curtain. Oh, is there a car out there? What are they gonna take? Because this week I had a couple of chairs out there and a lot of random little things like a couple of golf clubs and a TV mount for the wall and a black light and things that I just didn't wanna take to the thrift store, just little things like that. I put them out there and since I'm on, visible from the main road, people can see it and they come by. And I don't care if they're using it for their house or if they're selling it to make money. I'm not selling it to make money. 
I have a section, I have a plastic tote of things that I do plan on selling to make money and the furniture and stuff that I'm not taking that I'll be selling to hopefully sell to make money. I'm not going to worry about a desk chair that only has uh, it doesn't even have any arms on it and it's what the cats have been sleeping on for the past three years but i put t-shirts down as many of you know and they sleep on the t-shirts and then i can get the fur off of that and wash it whatever so the chairs are great but they're just old chairs and the effort of selling something for ten dollars or having a garage sale i may do a garage sale at one point after i'm at the kids house we may do a to household garage sale but just let someone else take it and enjoy it right because sometimes people really need it and sometimes people who are resellers need it to support their family so i don't worry about that and i'm sorry if i'm going on and on about that but some people are like you should sell it and make money why are you giving it to someone else because they're going through the effort of driving around town to find things and even if it's for free, they still have to clean it because I'm not cleaning it before I put it out to the trash. You know, that's if they don't pick it up, the trash man comes by the following week and picks everything up. So they have to get it home, clean it, and they have to list it and they have to do whatever they're doing, sell it at the garage sale or whatever. Let them enjoy it. But for those of you that just want to disappear before I keep rambling on, your scrappy word for today is pillows. Do you do throw pillows? I really do love the idea of being able to use this as a wall hanging. I'm so glad I saw that on someone else's, I don't know, I saw it on Facebook or a blog or a video or something, but how to use this as a wall hanging and a pillow cover. Now, I used to have throw pillows early on in my marriage, but then some people in the house would put their feet on them and I like them on the couch and I like to use them as a pillow and also as decorative. So if someone puts their feet on it, I don't want to put my face on it. And then the kids, when they were younger, they would throw them around and, and then people would like flop on the couch and throw them off out of the way. So I stopped having pillows and now I have the cats and I don't want the cats laying on them. They have their own quilts. They don't need my quilted pillows. So I'm in that stage right now where I love to have the throw pillows on the couch and to decorate, whether they're on the back of the couch or they're on the couch. But for right now, I'm just going to make them, make some for me, make some for you, and I will use them as wall hangings until I'm ready for pillows. I received a few random questions here and there about the move, when we're going to move and all that stuff. As I mentioned, we are, we're supposed to be looking at like October of 2023, but it might not be until April of 2024. And there's the, the thing is, is there's two stores. So we don't know if we're going to go to the surprise store or if we're going to, I don't know the name of the town. I can't remember the second town. I have three different names in my head, so I'm not going to say what it is, but it's somewhere in that general area. Like my daughter could live in Surprise, but then she would probably have a 45 minute drive to work. So we're not going to say, okay, surprise, surprise, 100%. That's the original plan that that would be the first store, but the second store might open before the first store does. I know it's confusing. The big boss is moving in June because he has three children and he wants to get there before the schools open. So I think he's picking a central location. And since he's going to be like the big area guy, he's already going to drive all around. So it doesn't matter where his house is. He's already going to be driving all day anyway. So they're getting there ahead of time. And I have told my daughter, I said, I have a feeling once they're there in like June or July that you'll get more information than the big corporate bosses. They're not going to go, hey, Miranda, by the way, here's something we're going to tell you because they don't want to tell you if things are going to change. But he'll tell her, he'll say, hey, this is going to happen. This is going to be going on, but it's a 50-50. It may or may not happen. It should be like, great, thanks for letting me know, but I won't set my heart on it. Uh, you know, I won't move my entire family across the country into one location knowing I'm going to need to move to a different location. But anyway, so once I sell this house, I'll move in with the kids. And the room that I'll be moving into for my bedroom is smaller than this room right here. This room is 8 by 10. And I think that room, it's, it's, it's a little den. There's I'm really a little bit worried about my claustrophobia because it's an inner room. There's Justin's bedroom, Robbie's bedroom, a Jack and Jill bathroom, and then the den that goes from 
in between all those three areas and then out into the to I, I guess you'd have to say it, it's a diagonal wall so it you open a door and you look right at the kitchen but it's just a little den a little office it's not an actual bedroom but since they all have their bedrooms I'm not gonna ask anyone to move out of it just for a few months so that is Robbie's uh, gaming room he uses it as his second bedroom where he can keep all he has a desk and the game and a futon and all that so I'm thinking I can fit my table here and then I can fit my bed like right there with you know I should be able to walk through it this way without having to go sideways but who knows but between the time of this house and their house, there may be an interruption in videos. There may be some random videos. It might not be what you're used to. I might do a live stream instead of a Friday tutorial. We might, I don't know what we might do. Who knows, right? I'm trying to make sure I have videos all set and that I'm in a situation where I can. It, it just, who knows? For that, we're only moving from here to six miles, but I do need to move my entire house to their garage. So we'll see how that ends up. Once I know that this house is sold, I can give you an estimate and say, okay, 30 days from now or 60 days from now, I'll have a little bit more of a heads up. And then when we get closer to Arizona, I, I think there's probably going to be a span of who knows what might happen. Maybe I'll put up some really, I, I talked to my patrons several times about this, but maybe I'll take a patron video from four years ago that you guys haven't seen here and pop it up here on YouTube while we're traveling and trying to get everything unpacked. So that it gives me a couple of weeks to help the kids get their house packed because mine will be all packed except for the little bit I need to survive here on YouTube. Because I have, I have a couple kits set aside that someone sent me. So I have some kits to work on so that we can sew during a live stream. I have random bits. I have the embroidery kits. I still have my poor little Santa that hasn't been touched in, what, over a year? We can, we can do a variety of things during live streams. I can even just go to Hobby Lobby and pick up some type of crafting kit. So we have something to do while we're sitting and chatting. Because most of this has got to get packed up. The rest of the house is kind of starting to already look empty. I have these white bookcases in my bedroom because I used to do my crafting in the bedroom. So when I look at that, I have the one shelf where I keep uh, I keep like a little thing of band-aids and I put my glasses at night and I have I have some medications and things, just random personal things you would have in your bedroom. My bathroom doesn't have like cabinets and stuff for all that so I have a little shelf right there so everything else is like empty whiteness and my cats have been loving it because they can lay on the bottom shelf they can lay on the second shelf they can lay on the third shelf they think they're like the queens now wait until they realize that we're living in a little house and we're living with the children that they always run and hide from when they come and visit and there's two other cats that are going to be in this small little tiny house with them so it's a three bedroom and a den with two bathrooms so it's a pretty big house in general but when you put five cats together and two of the bedrooms are off limits yeah that's going to prove to be interesting but anyway, so I've been going through and I've been packing up here and I've, I've, I've packed a lot of the stuff that you don't use every day because there's just things you don't, you own, but you don't need them. Like I don't need, I don't need the holiday stuff, all the holidays pump packed up. I have a little ceramic pumpkin and a little square vase and I have some special glasses and plates that I don't use. And, and when I go from here to the kid's house, I'm going to pack up my entire kitchen and not use it until we get to Arizona. Because when we get there, we're going to use my pan, pots and pan sets. So we might use it at the kid's house and we might not because they've just never had it anyway. So why bother? A lot of the stuff we're just going to either throw it away because it's Dollar Tree cookie sheets that we've each had for like four or five years. And when they get nasty and whatever, falling apart, you just go and get another one for a dollar or something like that. But when we get to Arizona, my daughter does a lot of baking. So she'd like to have some really good cookie sheets. So we'll buy quality ones for her. It was always things for them to get started with their house just to get them going. And then they would know what they want, what they like and what they can afford. 
or just not buy anything and just use what you have and save some money, however it works, right? So right now I have my bedrooms all situated, the kitchen situated, the living room, the cat's room is all done. I've cleaned that out. I have a list of things to go on Facebook Marketplace. I am very concerned about going into the garage and getting that going because I, I've cleared it out. There's everything that's left in there is pretty much going except for like lawnmowers and stuff. So I just need to get all of the tools put into containers and get them all packed up. The fabric room is probably the second bedroom over there is half packed up. And then this space. Yeah, that, that, that's, um, that's something. I know how I'm going to pack it and I can't pack much. I can pack a lot of it up but I can't pack all of it until it's closer to the, to the deadline. When they say, okay, your house is sold, here's the papers, we're closing in 30 days. Well, once that happens, I'm taking down, it's going to change. I'm taking down all of the bookcases, taking them apart, labeling them, putting the tools in little Ziploc baggies, and then I bought that saran wrap like on a roll for moving. So I will, I don't want to put them all in one, like the bookcase all in one, because it's heavy. I remember bringing the boxes in from the front porch when they were delivered. That's too heavy. So I will do it in separate things, but make sure everything is labeled like, this is bookcase one. So this shelf is 1A, two, uh, 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E. You know, this is bookcase two. So this is 2A, 2B, 2C, and that's... For me, that's how I'll know how to put it back together. Because even though this bookcase and that bookcase are identical, and they were put together the same day, bought at the same time, I bought them at Walmart for $25 or $39 or something like that. Who's to say they're identical, right? So that's what I'm working on. That's where my brain has been. And I am just like, la, la, la. My... When you get a head cold and your head feels all stuffed up, well, mine is all stuffed up with thoughts and knowledge right now. And thank you for letting me let some of that out. I appreciate for those of you that hung out to the end and are listening to this. Y'all know how it is. There's a lot going on at the very last minute. And hurricane season starts on June 1st. So many of us have tarps on our roofs still. I feel really nervous for myself. I feel nervous for myself anyways, but I feel really nervous for other people, especially when I see their tarps flapping in the from the wind and stuff that's been damaged. Uh, it's, it's really kind of scary for a lot of people. All right, let's look at something happy before we leave. Butterflies. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Say, thank you again for letting me just ramble. We'll see how much I actually left in <laughs> this video and how much I delete out. I will see you guys. Oh, live stream. Live stream this Friday at 3 Eastern time. We are going to work on an art quilt. I'm sorry, I did not work on one this weekend. I thought about it and I thought about it and I really feel like I only have one in me and I want to save that for you guys during the live stream and I want it to be fresh and I want it to be creative and I don't want it to be okay, here's what I made. Let's make another one exactly. Wait a minute. So here's what I made. Let's make another one exactly like it. No, I want to just have that creativity and let it just kind of develop on its own. So we're going to make an art quilt. We might make two because I haven't decided if I want to make a cactus or a flower. So I might show you two different versions and we're going to do the start of it. We're not going to quilt it and turn it into a wall hanging and everything in this video. I'm just going to show you how to make the top of it and then we'll see what happens after that. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you guys are having a great week and I'll see you on Friday if you wanna come and visit me for the live stream. Otherwise, I'll see you on the replay, which happens to be the left hand. So this is the live stream, this is the replay. Bye.